Hello everyone, Drago1 here, and today we're going to be taking a look at the Ultimate Windows 98 machine. And wait a minute, we've had a video like this before, and it turned out the Ultimate computer wasn't as ultimate as we thought it was. Now I'm going to be honest with you, this build is actually pretty good, but it's not perfect. Now, of course, the main purpose for building a Windows 98 machine in 2014 is mainly to play the games you can no longer play on Windows 7, Windows 8, even Windows XP in some cases, such as Pod Racer and Pod Racer. Well, to start off here, let's take a look at the front. Here we have two generic looking CD-ROM drives with volume control and headphone jack, a bunch of stickers that have nothing to do with what is actually inside the computer, and a neat little door so you can hide away your floppy drive. And the power button's kind of cool too. Taking a look at the back, we're in desperate need of one of these guys. And of course, what drug a one rig would be complete without some wire ties somewhere? Rear-facing I.O. is about as delicious as you can get. VGA, S-Video, and DVI out from the video card. A 10100 Ethernet card for playing those delicious Windows 98 LAN games. A Hopog or Hopage WinTV TV tuner card with S-Video and coaxial inputs. And of course we have your standard sound card with game port. Now, this is the moment you've probably all been waiting for. The internals, or Draga 1 sucks at cable management. To start off, we have an AMD Duron running at 1.2 GHz, a $5 Cooler Master heatsink and fan, an NVIDIA 3D Force 5200, two 512 MB sticks of PC100 RAM, a 30 gigabyte craptacular hard disk and the two optical drives are up here. Now the rest of this cable nonsense has to do with the sound card. This cable connects the sound card to the Win TV TV tuner and this cable connects the sound card to the topmost optical drive. I could have connected more than one of these so that both of the drives could utilize CD audio, but I decided just to use the top one if I'm going to be playing a game. And let's not forget the power supply. It's probably not good enough. So I'm going to guess you guys want to see this thing boot up. This is probably the most visual portion besides looking at the screen when it comes to a boot up. So uh, let's go ahead and start it up. Okay, this is the startup sequence. Check in the memory, and there's our gig. And for some reason, it doesn't detect the uh, hard disk right away. It has to go through this Promise RAID controller in order to detect the drive. I'm not quite sure why that has to happen, but it takes a good extra 10 seconds to find it. And here we have Windows 98 SE with the unofficial service pack. It's beautiful startup screen. And pretty soon here we will be into Windows. And there she is in all of her flickery glory. <laughs> okay, so as you can see we have a pretty standard Windows 98 installation here running second edition with uh, a lot of games and other programs already installed. Cramp folder for the stuff that was on there when it was first installed that we don't need. And a bunch of games that automatically dump shortcuts on the desktop. 
I'm going to be looking at some of these today, but others are going to be for future videos, so stay tuned for those. Now, of course, games isn't the only thing this thing can do. It can, uh, there's also... No. Okay, it's mostly games. But don't forget, I also installed a TV tuner card. Which does, in fact, work. So first and foremost, we're going to set this to S video mode, and uh, let's watch us some Star Wars. Yeah, we're playing a VHS tape right now, because let me pause it real quick. Uh, pause. This is one of those fancy VHS players that just captures a screen cap like that and then it goes again. but. I can still rewind it. And so this is analog in, as you can see. So it works great. Uh, looks great. Um, I can also full screen it, but then the aspect ratio will be thrown off a bit. Looks a little bit pixelated there. That's pretty standard right there. So if you don't feel like watching a movie, you can just stop it and play a video game. Pretty much uh, whatever you want to do, you can do it with uh, your TV tuner card. It's a very nice little thing to have, as sort of crappy as it is with all the noise and low resolution and all that. But, you know, it's, it's kind of cute. It's really cute. And I have a, a modern version of this card, actually, that I'm using in my main recording PC to capture this video right now. So it's... It's kind of lame, but it's really, really cute, and I, and I like it a lot. You could do a lot with it. Uh, like I said, it has uh, coaxial and S-video input, as well as an FM tuner, but I don't think I'm ever going to get any use out of that at all. And since the switch to digital a while back, uh, this is pretty much useless for plugging into your old antenna unless you have a converter box. And there is one more thing I have to do with the TV tuner card while I'm still playing with it. Plug it into the video card. <laughs> hey, that's right! I can plug my TV tuner into my video card. And it's fun. Oh god. <laughs> oh, this is what I'm talking about. Woo! Oh man. Oh, whoa. Whoa. <laughs> wow. <laughs> it sort of just fades into the back there. And it's gone. So yeah, mindless distraction such as this is putting probably very expensive at its time computer hardware to good use. <laughs> so a quick thing to check, there is this NVIDIA desktop manager which allows you to change profiles for multi-monitor setups. And technically, I could have up to three displays plugged into this at once, but unfortunately, I think it can only output to two at a time. As you can see here, we have, I have three different things plugged in at once. I have the analog display, which is my VGA capture, uh, TV, which is the S-Video Out, and the Gateway FPD, etc. is my monitor, which is connected via DVI. So there are three outputs, like I said before, on the video card, and you can use all different kinds of selections, uh, or you can just set it to a single display, or dual view, which is multi-monitor, and you can drag windows to and from each monitor. You can adjust uh, refresh rate, screen resolution on the fly uh, from this little menu here. I have another little goodie on here called Mod Plug Player, which uh, plays module files probably never would have guessed that. But yeah, it's a cool little lightweight uh, program that can 
play your module files, even on very old hardware, like you're seeing here. So it's a good thing to just have running in the background if you want to listen to some groovy old school beats. You can sort of collapse into a mini player. Or I think you can even go into system tray if I remember correctly. So that's a cool little thing to have on there. And I'm currently featuring Skaven's music, who is absolutely remarkable. I was sort of grew up listening to this while I was working on computer videos for my channel back in the day. Good times. So let's take a look at DX Diag. And you'll see that since I have a modern-ish video card, and by ish I mean like 2006, I'm running the latest version of DirectX 9 that I can. So it uh, can handle almost anything that supports Windows 98 and DirectX 9. There's more information about my display. And for the video and for your eyes, I'm running this at 640x480, just so you can read all the text. Any high resolutions things start to get blurry because I am using S video to record this. Seems kind of ghetto, I know, but uh, it works, and I like the way it looks. So there's this one gem of a game. It sort of stands above other games a little bit. There are other games that stand out. When it comes to Windows 98, though, the first thing that comes to your mind is Pod Racer. Now, Pod Racer, when you try to run it on anything other than a Windows 9X, you run it into this problem where when you start the race, everything goes white and freezes up. Now, this is actually cured by a patch from the LucasArts themselves. And uh, it actually fixes the problem. And you can play this game on modern systems if you get the patch. So you might be thinking, oh, well, if I can do that, why do I need to build a Windows 98 machine? Well, I guess you kind of don't, but, I mean, that wouldn't be any fun, would it? Cute little intro. And interestingly enough, we were just watching Star Wars. It wasn't this one, but uh, here we are. Running at pretty good FPS. We are running on a 3D Force 5200, so it should be pretty good. A video card that's many, many years ahead of this game. So, of course, we're just going to play the first track just for old time's sake. So if you're running this on a modern system, running Windows NT or higher, anything higher, right about now, oh, I forgot how to play the game, unfortunately, okay, okay, it's entered. You would have crashed the game completely. It would, the whole screen would have gone white, and uh, there's a bit of boost. I don't really know how to toggle it though. Oh, it's shift. Okay. I don't. I don't really know how I'm doing this, to be honest. But uh, yeah, this is probably the most pathetic performance of racing in pod racer I've ever had. So a uh, good thing that I had the cameras on for this, I, I guess. Okay, for some reason the accelerate button is enter, and the shift button is left shift, so I can't actually do a boost. So I just sort of died there. Now let's see if I can make a comeback. Well, whatsoever. Or maybe I should can I. Nope, I can't change the controls from here. So yeah, you're just going to see a very pathetic performance of uh, Pod Racer right here, right now. But the first track is the absolute easiest, and this game actually goes from very easy to soul-crushingly hard. On some tracks, they are absolutely infuriating and require a lot of patience to get through. There's pretty much only one racer 
that you really need to be playing as, and that's Mars Goo or Mars Guo, however you want to pronounce it. You upgrade him all the way, and he is the fastest motherfucker in the galaxy. So this is it. This is what the whole 98 build has led up to, playing this game at a decent frame rate, having it look good without any graphical bugs, glitches, or problems. It just works with sound pretty well. This is the primary goal with the build. Everything else is sort of secondary. The only other game that really meant the most to me when I was a kid was LEGO Racers, and we'll be covering that in a separate video later on. I know there have been countless videos of LEGO Racers made in the past about people reviewing the game and having retrospective of the game. I'll be taking uh, a similar approach in the near future. Now, let's see if I can beat Zabulba without boosting. And if I can boost. There we go. Coordination. So, boost or rival if you sort of crash while you're boosting. Temp will start to heat up, and then you can actually have an engine fire if you don't, and then you have to repair. You can actually repair, that's one of the cool features. It's sort of like in the movie where his engine ca catches on fire because he got uh, sabotaged by Sebulba, and uh, he needed to repair it, and you can actually see the little display in the bottom as he's. Uh, let's see if I can do this. Okay. Finish. I'm gonna burn this. Got it. Come back. So it makes it feel a lot like the movie. It feels awesome to play. If they made an HD version of this game today, with with online competitive uh, online competitive scene with leaderboards, I think you could see a very active community from this title. It is an, a fantastic game that's a lot of fun. And if they took a modern take on this, which I don't really see them doing, but maybe if Disney decides to put another pod racing tournament in one of the new Star Wars that are going to be coming out over the next couple years, maybe we could see a new pod racer game. I'm holding out for it, and I hope you are too, because this game is fantastic. So. Uh, from this point forward, I'm going to be moving on to installing some other games on the Windows 98 machine. Uh, and we're going to see how they perform, how they run, have some first impressions of how these games have aged over the years and such. And I'm going to be getting to that right now. Hey guys, a little postscript here. I'm going to be splitting this video up into two parts. This first one being the Windows 98 introduction, and the second being the overview of the rest of the games played on the system. Click the annotation on Anakin's face to jump to that video now. Shit! Also, this exhaust fan, it's... It's all right. <laughs> Fucking Rayman. <laughs>